Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our retro look back and a discussion of whether or not the 5th generation iPod Touch is still a smart buy as we approach the end of 2016. From a design perspective, the 5th generation iPod Touch remains unchanged with the 6th generation model, which is to say they both pack a 4-inch IPS retina display that's sharp, vibrant, as well as colorful. However, compared to more modern smartphones and also media devices on the market, at only 4 inches it seems a bit small. For instance, we have a 5-inch phone, this is a Ficom Passion 660, and next to it you can see really the size difference. Uh, coming back from an Android phone, I really found it a little difficult to type on such a small screen. However, after a few minutes, I did get used to this experience again. Otherwise, the main differences between the 6th generation iPod Touch and the 5th gen model is underneath the hood. This version has a dual core processor that's underclocked to uh, 800 megahertz compared to the 6th gen, which is clocked at 1.1 gigahertz. And the difference is a bit more dramatic as we look at benchmarks, and also the latest model is going to be better for multitasking as well as playing back graphically intensive games. However, for most casual users out there, for light web browsing, for video streaming, the 5th gen model still works flawlessly and as you would expect. Otherwise, taking a quick look at the design of the iPod first, we have access on the front here to a camera that allows you to do FaceTiming as well as video conferencing through other apps. Down below here is that infamous home button, but unfortunately you'll notice that this does not have a Touch ID sensor on board, which means there isn't a fingerprint reader, but nor is that a feature found on the 6th gen model. There's access to dedicated volume controls, which are tactile and responsive on the left-hand edge, as well as, on the very top, a power on-off switch. On the bottom, there's access to the now standard lightning adapter port for charging and syncing. It's a reversible cable, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and a mono speaker, which is a little bit on the shallow side of the spectrum. It's quite loud, it's clear sounding, but it's not very rich. Otherwise, the other side just features uh, actually nothing at all, and the back features a 5.0 megapixel autofocus enabled camera. The camera itself does protrude from the body of the iPod, which is the same design philosophy coming from the latest gen of Apple mobile devices like the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. It's not the most attractive thing in the world, and it also becomes the first point of contact when you set it onto a desk or a surface, making it a bit more easy to damage. However, Overall, I, I think that Apple did a decent job with uh, what they've had, and the larger size allows them to pack in a slightly bigger sensor that allows more light to be entered into the camera module, resulting in better low-light shots. There's also an LED flash. Now, the camera itself is not as high-res as the 8-megapixel found on the 6th gen iPod Touch. However, this one isn't a slouch either and still does a good job as far as some light video recording and photo taking. There's also an antenna for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth bands, and just the Apple logo on the very back. So overall, it's still a very clean and a petite package wrapped in an almost an impossibly thin portfolio that uh, remains a pretty high quality feeling in the hand. However, despite the beautiful hardware presented here, my biggest issue with the iPod Touch 5th Gen is that it's an iPod. It's a dying breed, a media player in this age of smartphones and also tablets, and stacked up to other products on the market, even Apple's own iPad mini, which is offered nearly at the same price point and has a larger 7-inch screen, it makes for the iPod Touch a very peculiar and almost uh, not a great buy if you're considering strictly in terms of value. Uh, previously, it was okay if you wanted it as a media player, maybe for kids, and you didn't want more expensive phone functionality stacked in, but now you can pick up a very budget Android smartphone for maybe even a fraction of the price, you don't even have to use it as a phone, and it still offers that same feature set built in. So as a strictly value proposition, the iPod Touch, even the 5th gen model, really does start to linger and fall behind. However, if you are dead set on getting an iPod Touch, then I have to say that the 5th gen model is not half bad, especially since it now sells for about half the price of the latest 6th gen model and includes all the latest firmware updates and software that you can run from the iOS store, which still makes it very compelling, especially if you're already invested in the Apple ecosystem and you have friends and family that use iPhones and they want to FaceTime you, this might be an option to consider. Um, otherwise, taking a closer look at the uh, OS here, it's basically what you would expect from most current um, you know, iOS devices out there, which is to say it's pretty elegant, uh, straightforward to use. Uh, there's a, not as much customization as Android, but uh, it allows for a pretty simple use in terms of viewing back images, viewing back uh, videos, going to web browse, and also playing back a few games here and there. If you're planning to upgrade from a 4th or a 3rd gen iPod Touch, then there are a few updates that are 
worth mentioning. For one, there are drag notification shades now on the top, just like on Android and on Windows Phone, allows you to check out notifications and quick calendar updates as well as stock info directly from the main screen. You can also drag up to access a shade that allows you to toggle on and off your wireless options in addition to access the screen brightness controls, in addition to media controls, as well as uh, quick shortcuts for the flashlight functionality using the LED light on the back, as well as launch into things like the clock, the calendar, and directly into the camera app. So these are pretty useful. You can still double tap on the home button two times to open up your currently open uh, apps and kind of multitask in a almost uh, pseudo WebOS platform and almost similar to Migo as well. And you can then flick and close up any currently open apps that you might have. So for instance, this is all the current apps that I have open. If I don't want to open the contacts anymore, I can flick it up and now it's closed and no longer uses up RAM and memory. So pretty simple and easy to operate the backgrounds, uh, the wallpapers, all those things can also be customized just like on the iPhone. Again, if you used an iPad or an iPhone in the past, you'll be right at home. So in terms of some other things to quickly note here, we do like how compared to previous generations of iPods, just like with the 6th gen iPod Touch, uh, we see that the build quality here is now made out of a matte aluminum shell as opposed to a very shiny chrome accented shell, which was a, a huge fingerprint magnet and also a scratch magnet. This one in terms of core applications, we have access to Passbook, which is a digital consolidation of all your important info when you're traveling, such as your boarding passes for planes. It's quite useful to have, and there's also some health apps, newsstand, iBooks for digital ebook reading, although a dedicated ink display on an ebook reader is still superior if you're planning on reading novels. There's also access to, of course, the App Store, which is great, uh, just like the Google Play Store. Those are two of the largest, uh, especially if you're coming in from a Windows phone, for instance. There's also a Notes uh, weather application clock map applications, and a few extras, including a digital voice recorder. Something I'm going to briefly mention about the apps is uh, back in back when the first iPhone was released before Google kind of showed their ambitions for making their own phone, uh, actually the iPhone ran on Google Maps. And now, of course, Apple is using their own proprietary map system. And uh, for better or for worse, they're kind of moving away from partnering with Google. And so a lot of the Google apps, although you can still find it in the app store, such as YouTube or Gmail, still isn't as fluent as you would find it on a Android smartphone, because of course, Google wants you to buy their own phones. And invest in their own ecosystem. So if you are heavily tied into things like Gmail or YouTube, then perhaps getting an Android media player is still the better route to go. Another aspect of the iPod Touch, which sets it apart from, let's say, an Android counterpart, is its high security options. Uh, Apple's iCloud uh, offers a very secure way for you to prevent other people from accessing your content. So you can remotely lock things um, and kind of delete your files as well. And it provides a higher overall level of security uh, than, let's say, a Google Google Android, which is a bit more open to hacking. So if you want to get this as a media player to load up a lot of your photos, your images and files, then this might be a better option than something less secure. So that is certainly something to quickly consider and point out. As far as battery life is concerned, I would say that the iPhone, the iPod Touch 5th generation is uh, pretty good. I would say about as good as the 6th gen iPod Touch, uh, not quite as good, but uh, all in all, you can still get roughly, I'd say uh, six to seven hours of usage out of this. During operation, I also notice that the 5th generation iPod Touch is cooler than the 3rd gen iPod Touch, so it doesn't have any issues in terms of overheating, even if you have multiple apps running in the background, and that's nice to see and an improvement. Next, I'm going to open up the Safari web browser and load up the full version of the New York Times, because that's a good benchmark as a complex site with multiple embedded links, video elements, interactive elements, which might make the browser struggle a bit more, and I'll show you guys the performance. So I found this link and let's check out how long it takes. We're using Wi-Fi right now, of course, to load up this page. Uh, so definitely a bit longer than let's say on a latest gen Android smartphone or even of course compared to the iPhone 6S um, just because the processing power on here is limited by the RAM, which is 512 megabytes as opposed to one gigabyte. Uh, still, you can see that it's respectable and text is reflow automatically. So if you want to zoom all the way in, pinch and zoom is very lucid. And once the page is loaded, you can still interact and uh, have a pretty good time as far as web browsing is concerned. Um, other pages, uh, there are some video elements which will work such as YouTube videos. So you can visit the mobile website of YouTube and still playback videos directly. So that is nice to see and uh, one of the main features that you would look for 
uh, from a typical consumer's point of view. So checking out the camera next, uh, again at 5 megapixels, it's not the best in the world, but it still does a respectable job. You can have tap to focus. So if you have a water here, the field of view is uh, decent. There are a few filters that you can play around with, just like on a iPhone or an iPad. You can also turn on the HDR mode on the side there, but that takes a few seconds longer for you to capture and save the shot. You can change, again, the placement of uh, the focus, the center, and there's also a pretty fast overall shutter speed. It takes just a few seconds to focus as well as to capture the overall image. You can also play around with filters and effects and change the aspect ratio of your shots and take video as well, although slow-mo video is not offered here, time-lapse is a function that you can play around with. So for instance, if I wanted to tap, tap back my previously captured image here, you can see the accelerometer is fairly sensitive, allows me to also share on social media, and then here is an image taken in HDR, which you can see a bit more of the detail all in all. So you can see that there is, uh, the camera here is definitely a massive improvement if you're coming from the fourth generation iPod Touch. Uh, not the best in the world, but it does the job uh, if you're in a hurry. So I would say that at the end of the day, the iPod Touch 5th generation model is still a pretty good iPod um, if you need an iPod, which is to say it's a great media player. Uh, you have to use the iTunes and the Apple ecosystem for downloading music and playing back your music, but the music quality is high fidelity. It sounds great. Um, as a web browser, it works well. And of course, you have that massive catalog of apps from the iOS store. Uh, however, the pricing here, even though it's going to be a lot cheaper and I think a bit, a bit of a smarter buy than the 6th generation iPod Touch, uh, for most users out there, if you don't need the latest and greatest, um, it's still not as smart as getting, let's say, a tablet or even a comparable Android-based uh, smartphone or a media player, uh, unless you need high security and you're really already tied into the Apple ecosystem and want something small. Anyways, guys, this has been a quick look back at the iPod Touch 5th generation model. Hopefully you guys found this video informative and useful. Uh, thanks again for watching here at OS Reviews.